Hello and welcome to Life Talks and Tea. My name is Ashley and I will be your host. Today's tea is Twines of London Chai Tea Decaffeinated. I am caffeine sensitive so I try not to drink as much caffeine. There will be some caffeine teas along the way. Um, that's really good. I usually have mine with a little bit of milk and a little bit of sugar. And a very hot stove. So that will be off to the side. So today is going to be kind of like how I envisioned all of these podcasts to go. The first episode I just felt like was something I wanted to process myself. So we're kind of on what I would like to be my scheduled programming. So hello and welcome again. Um, today we're going to be talking about, as I said in the first episode, this lovely book right here, The Game of Desire by Shane Boudram. Yeah, so today is going to be more like a book review. It might be... A bit shorter than the other ones, but there'll be some talks here and there. And I just kind of want to talk about this. So I heard about this book originally from Ms. Shambu Jam when she was posting all of her self-promotion. Obviously, I follow her on Instagram, Twitter. I follow her on everything. I love her if she's seeing this. Hi, I love you. Um, I love your work. <laughs> Shout out to Shambu Jam. I will obviously add all of her social media to this um, video and podcast. It'll be down below in the description or in the video itself. I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so this was a book I was really excited about. So I am a therapist and I work a lot. Um, I previously worked a lot with adults. So let me preface this. So I, when I got this book, I was actually looking for work um, in uh, different fields um, in therapy. And I was like, oh, I need more tips and tricks for dating because I knew some stuff and I had some advice but I didn't have as much information as I would like because um, I did have some of those issues with previous clients that I worked with and I didn't really feel as adequate um, when it came to giving them therapeutic help. I did seek um, help from my supervisors and they guided me along the way but I felt like I needed my own resources. So that's in the mindset when I got this book um, to kind of have more tools in my resource kit to help my own clients. I currently work with kids as I previously stated so this does not really come into play with the younger ones. I do have one, a couple of teens so it can come into play with them in modified form because this kind of does talk about sexuality so it does have to be age appropriate when you work with children. Keeping that in mind though as an adult I genuinely loved and enjoyed this book and I loved and enjoyed how she promoted it. And in this book, we go through, um, and it was mentioned in my review, and I have some notes over here, so if I look over here, that's what I'm looking at. Um, Hello, I'm currently editing episode two. If you've seen episode one, the video version, you see I'm wearing the same outfit. I'm editing these at the same time. Um, I just wanted to come on here real quick to talk about the book of Game of Desire. I realized as I was going through the audio that I did not actually preface the book at all. So the book is actually about Ms. Shambu Dran educating six women on dating and it becomes a very, it's a qualitative study, group study, because it's six women that she created to help women in all different aspects of life, in all different areas of sexuality and help them learn about themselves and how to navigate the dating world. So essentially throughout the whole book, you are following the lives of six women, including Ms. Shambu Dran and how her lessons are being taught per individual and how they're kind of being observed. And it's just very interesting and you go through and you see these women grow. And it's a very lovely book with great storytelling. Just wanted to hop on real quick and preface the book properly because I just jumped straight into the resources, the education, and the way she formats her experiments because I was just very excited about the book. So there's my quick jump in. Enjoy the rest of the talk. Okay, bye. So she provides a lot of resources within the book. So here's one. Um, I don't know how much you can see because I do not have a monitor. So <laughs> this is a guess. But this is the Kinsey scale. So it has, in the book itself, she talks about the Kinsey scale. And if you don't know what the Kinsey scale is, it's essentially created by Kinsey. I forget his first name. Um, I'll have it written here. Um, he created a scale from zero to five. Um, I forget what side of the scale is each, but one side is like completely heterosexual and the other side is completely homosexual. And his theory was that everyone lands somewhere in between. You're not fully heterosexual, you're not fully homosexual. And so her part in doing that was for the individuals in the group, so she had um, five women, 
um, review that and kind of learn more about their, themselves and their own sexuality. That scale had a lot of controversy behind it. There is a lot of science that was put behind it and it was um, peer reviewed by many people. The Kinsey scale is a bit outdated because it was invented in the 40s. So 1940s, I think it's late 1940s, is when the scale was invented. So it is slightly outdated, but it still is relevant to the idea of sexuality and kind of understanding your own interests. And that was my big takeaway from this book. And if you take anything from this book, it is dating is a lot about you, yourself, and what do you want. And that's what she pushes throughout the whole book. It's for these women to learn about themselves learn how to educate themselves and learn how to portray themselves to get what they want out of dating. Because it's not about the other person, it's about what you want from that person. And so obviously they're going to have their own agenda from what they want for you. But the main goal is for you to understand what you want yourself. And so the book is divided into five sections. Um, looking to my left. <laughs> the sections are phase one is no, phase two is change, phase three is learn, phase four is practice, and phase five is be. And so the phase one is when you get to know a lot about yourself holistically. And holistically means is in all areas of who you are, your interests, your likes, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, what you want for your future, just kind of things that you do want and kind of to know yourself in that regards. It is very important to know yourself and that's something that she does push. And so a lot of stuff that it is taught in this book that she has for herself on her website. So I will also link her website down below so you can access this stuff as well. Um, I believe you should still be able to access it if you don't have the book, but you can double check that for yourself. I'll still link it below. Um, she has a lot of quizzes and I really like the quiz format because it's kind of like you're, it's for yourself and you're doing it for you. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so the quizzes involved and I'm looking over here. Um, so we have the turn on triggers, you have love language, sexuality, apology language, attachment styles, and the big five personality traits. And then the other interesting aspect that got a lot of traction in the social media um, is why your previous relationships have failed from both perspectives. So there is actually a part in the book where you reach out to your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or lover, however you want to define them, um, and ask them what happened. And here it is. It's a list of questions. And so she actually posted this list, I believe herself, um, of questions to ask your ex. And I'll read off a couple. Uh, did you find me reasonable? Did I talk too much about myself? Um, did I ask for too much too soon? Did I not ask for enough? So these are kind of just some questions that she had the people ask their ex and she did it herself, which love it. You got to lead by example and that's exactly what she did. Um, she discussed a lot about that she was going to do it first. And so she reached out to one of her ex and did the exact same thing to kind of inspire the other girls in the book to do the same. And I loved it. It was interesting. I did not do it personally because um, when I was reading through this book again, I was just doing it for my own kind of resource and to learn a little bit more about myself. But I just found it very interesting. I did do all the other stuff. So I do know my own turn on triggers, love language, sex, all that jazz that I stated earlier. Um, but it's interesting because in psychology, we do talk a lot about attachment styles and personality traits. And so for her to incorporate that in her book and have it accessible to the public in like a understandable language is just beautiful and that's what I'm essentially trying to do myself is to have these big concepts of psychology understandable and kind of have life lessons. So, and so the next part of the book after kind of getting to know yourself holistically through all these different channels and through all these different formats is to change. And it's not really change your personality, change everything, no, it's changing things to kind of fit the style you want and to build the image you want for yourself. And so essentially the part with change is that to always kind of work towards self-improvement because we're always trying to improve ourselves to be the better version of ourselves every day. And so now this part of the book goes, builds off the first part and it says now that we have learned all of these things, how do we change ourselves to kind of showcase our new being, showcase that we know ourselves better, like kind of build up this image and create kind of our idealistic self. 
And then the change kind of bleeds into the next part of the book, which is the learn. And so in the learn part, she reached out to different professionals to educate the women in different areas of dating. And I found that very fascinating. And if you do not know the answer for anything, always seek out professional help, even if it's just online or in person, always go to a professional for advice to kind of help guide you in whatever's going on. And so that's exactly what she did. These individuals that were professionals in their own little realms were designed to help the women not only educate themselves on different areas of dating, but to also have them kind of be more comfortable in their own skills, which kind of goes into phase four. And phase four is a very quirky part of the book that was very entertaining, kind of awkward, but, but very raw and real. And I think that's what kind of caught my attention with a lot of what was being done. So she essentially was doing experiments to practice the skills that they learned. So practice being seductive and kind of going up to someone and talking to them, sparking conversation and things that they learned. And it was quirky in the sense that it was kind of awkward situations. One of the scenes, one of the scenes, one of the sections in the book, it, they were testing out different perfumes and kind of having them ask people in a bar like, hey, does this smell better than this one? There was one that hit all over every media outlet that I've seen, which was essentially vabbing, I believe is the term, um, where women use their own natural lubrication from their vaginal region um, as perfumes. So essentially you would put it on like pulse points. So like I think it was your wrist, your neck, and I think it was like your chest area, another area, because there's been a lot of science to suggest and support that your own natural aroma um, will attract a mate. And it is true, there's a lot of science behind that, and I'll put some resources below to kind of support that, because there's a lot of science. And it just kind of goes back to um, human nature and goes back to like prehistoric times, that that's how people, that's how animals attract meat. So, so when you're, for women, when they're ovulating, they s secrete certain pheromones, and these pheromones essentially will attract a mate. So same goes with your vaginal lubrication. It secretes a certain amount of pheromones that will attract a mate. Um, and so it was one of the many experiments done, and that one got the most traction just because that one's the most, I'm, I'm going to just say out there. It is very out there. It is very interesting. And if you would like to test it yourself, go right ahead. I recommend looking to the book for some advice um, on that. But it's just the practice phase, what stood out to me was having these women be out of their comfort zone. And it's said millions and millions of times from many different outlets that being out of your comfort zone is how you grow. And I had a professor in college who would always say, you have to go to grow. And it stuck with me <laughs> 10 years later. Um, it's not been 10 years, but it stuck with me for a very long time. You gotta go to grow. And his example was he originally was from California and he went to, I believe, Ohio for college. And he said, I had to go to grow. And the person he became through moving was different than the person he knew he would have become if he would have stayed. And so that's something to think about for yourself is you have to kind of get out of your comfort zone to kind of grow in experience, grow in comfort, grow as a person. And that is something she pushed so heavily throughout the whole book. And that's something that I loved because a lot of different dating things were, oh, you have to do this. You have to lose 20 pounds, you have to be blonde hair, blue eyed, you have to um, stand a certain way, you have, like, it's just very physical things. You have to physically change your weight yourself to attract a mate, and that's what I've seen a lot. And there are a lot of other outlets that say you have to change your personality, you have to change how you kind of phrase things. No, her book pushed, you have to just be comfortable and grow within yourself and the rest will follow. And I love that and I respect it so much because that is something I push for myself for all of the people I work with is that they have to understand themselves to be able to grow into themselves. And that's something a lot of people don't know. You have to understand your past. You have to understand your likes, what you don't like. You have to understand what you respect, your morals, everything you, to be able to grow into the person you want to grow into. Obviously, a lot of things can change. You can cut your hair and be presumed as more attractive in today's society. Sadly, if you lose weight, you're presumed as more attractive. But now there's a lot of other things in society where if you have bigger hips or a bigger butt or big boobs, you're attractive. But in this book, she pushes, you have to be able to kind of find your own worth, grow into yourself, and you will, and people, you will attract people. 
Because people who are comfortable in themselves attract people who are comfortable in themselves. So there's an old saying that says great minds think alike. And I think that goes well with this. And we attract what we seek. And those things kind of go hand in hand because if you are seeking a fun time, you're going to get a fun time. If you are seeking a commitment, you're going to get a commitment. But you have to understand yourself and understand what you want and your worth so you don't accept anything less. And that's a great part. And then the last phase, which kind of goes into what I'm just talking about, is be. Just be who you are, be what you want to be, and always be new and improved. You are going to learn so much through your own journeys and to just embrace that and be confident with yourself because everyone's attractive in their own right. Everyone's attractive in any way they want because the, the, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I love um, something to learn about me while I take a little tea break. I love cliches just because they're cliche for a reason. There's a lot of lesson to be learned with these cliche phrases. In this book, it pushes a lot that people will be attracted to people who find themselves confident who find themselves attractive and you have to learn how to be comfortable in your own skin to be okay with being approached and I think that's something that's beautiful and then this other thing you have to be comfortable in your skin to approach someone else and to not be scared of the rejection piece because in life rejections everywhere and kind of with the same lesson last episode is death is everywhere but so is rejection we're gonna get rejected everywhere walking down the street jobs discounts <laughs> rejections everywhere and it's bound to happen and it's being comfortable with yourself to accept that you will be rejected so that's kind of my little spiel for the day my little life lessons my life lesson is always to kind of learn and grow and be comfortable with yourself and this book pushes that i highly recommend i enjoyed it thoroughly i'm not in the dating environment anymore however to learn more about myself in my own like love language and apology language, to be able to communicate with my partner and talk to him about his own love language and have him learn about himself and it does help with communication. I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of resources available within the book as well that will be beneficial for everyone to kind of look over and read. And that's another high point. She does provide a lot of resources for the common reader to use and I have nothing but praises for Miss Shambhujan and the work she does and the work she puts out. I will link her YouTube, all of her stuff in the description because I believe she is doing a great job and she is definitely someone to look out for in the social media realm and in the mental health realm. She, uh, Miss Shambhujan is a sexologist who is a relationship and intimacy expert and she is a beautiful woman doing a beautiful job in this crazy world and nothing but respect for her. Again, Highly recommend the book. I believe it was, mine says $29.99 on the, on the back, but I bought it on Amazon and I believe it was like $15 when I bought it. It might have gone up, might have gone down. Highly recommend. Um, there's audiobooks of this. The audiobook is her voice, so if you like her voice, the audiobook is where to go. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.